culture is changing at a rapid rate. With the rise of technology, it's impacting the way that we see ourselves and the way we relate to one another. Navigating through the teenage years is already tricky with so much going on in our bodies and now so much going on in the world around us. In this series, we're gonna explore some of these important topics that can impact us right now in this time during our lives. I'm Kim and this is Teenacious. the right choice. But how do we actually know it is the right choice? I mean, what's true for me is not necessarily what's true for you, right? And what's right in one situation is not necessarily right in another situation. So do you ever just want to do the right thing, but just end up doing the very thing that you thought you didn't want to do? Me too. Well, today we're going to explore the topics of making good choices and we're going to look at what things do we need to take into account in order to make these good choices. Why is making good choices so hard? Uh, and someone who I know who constantly makes great choices uh, and a good friend of mine, Mark Doyle, Executive Director of Net Ministries. Thank you for coming today. Thanks, Kim. It's great to be here with you. <laughs> um, Mark, making good choices. It's so hard. When I was just, I was catching up with the teenagers the other day, we were talking about this topic and a lot of them were kind of like, you know, what's a good choice? What, like yeah. my friends say, there was one guy saying, you know, my friend's good choice is not necessarily my good choice. Yes. Like what? What is, how do we know? Yeah, well, it is, it's so hard, isn't it? Like I remember being a teenager myself and making a lot <laughs> of bad choices, yeah. you know? Maybe some of, the, uh, some of them at the time I thought were okay, but looking back now, I definitely have a lot of things that I wish I had made a better choice about. Yeah. And at the time, the consequences for me was that I felt regret, I felt ashamed, I felt unworthy, I just felt horrible. So I'm really excited to be here with you to talk about this subject because I think if we can help young people, you know, live a life of fewer regrets, live a life where they feel happy and peaceful, then I'm all for that. I think it's like a deep inside, you kind of have that gut feeling if something's right or not. And I know for me, it really comes from where, what values I hold, like what's really important to me. That really comes from when when you grow up and your parents keep reminding you, oh, this is this is what you're supposed to do. This is this is what your values should be. Just as you grow up, that all that whole time, it's it's put into a code in your head, and that almost becomes your conscience going. There's also some really hard choices that, like me and my family went through, even to moving to Queensland was a very hard choice because. I, I didn't understand why it was even an option, moving. So, I mean, I guess like looking at your values and things like that, at first a choice probably doesn't make sense. And sometimes you just need to trust that your family or your friends are saying what's best for you because, you know, they love you. But I know in the past where I'm in a situation and I have to make a choice and that voice in the back of my head has all my all my values everything that's important to me and that's I either listen to that or I don't and I know times where I haven't and you know I know after the event or whatever that that just wasn't me and then there's times where it's really hard and I could make a choice that would probably be a bad choice um but I but I feel that in the forefront of my mind, no, like you don't have to do this and choose to go the other way, regardless of, you know, what other people may think. And I think, yeah, you really feel it inside you. You feel that like, yep, yeah, that was a good choice. Even if at the time it was really hard to make, it's definitely worth it in the end. Navigating in the teenage years is difficult even just with brain development because you know your frontal lobe's going crazy yeah. that's where your decision making processes are so if that's kind of going foggy then 
man, how, you know, it's going to be one of the times where we might not even know why we make some of the choices and going, man, why did I do that? Yeah. But you're right. I remember when we were talking um, the other day with the teenagers, they were saying, you know when you've made a wrong choice because there's something in us that tells us we just, we can tell, we feel it. I think you're right. And, and we, we call that conscious sometimes. Yeah. It's actually really hard for a lot of people to tap into that though, because sometimes you have to be kind of quiet and kind of still for long enough to let that little voice inside of us kind of come to the surface. But I think for most people, if they do that, they, they, they know that there's something in their gut, in their conscience that tells them, look, maybe that wasn't the best choice actually. Family influences, um largely impacts on your choices as well and i know um when when you've done something wrong sometimes you don't even need that someone to tell you you've done it wrong mm -hmm. you're thinking in your head why why have i done that i i, I want to be better i want to change my ways and turn myself around often we can really act on just our emotions and we're just in a moment and we're kind of caught up with all that and we can't really think straight. Uh, but sometimes it's really good just to ask yourself, all right, why, like, why am I doing this? Um, why, why should I make this choice? You know, why should I go this way? Why should I go that way? Kind of really trying to separate your emotions from, you know, your, your brain, your thinking, where your moral compass is, I guess. Um, because it's really easy just to get caught up in that, you know, what your friends are doing or what everyone's saying. Reading the scriptures and kind of seeing like what Jesus would do, because even though he did like a lot of stuff and, you know, he died on the cross for us, but just stepping back and, you know, seeing what he would do, because I feel like in your life, you have a lot of different people tell you what, what is a good decision and what is truth. But when you step back in the end of the day, like, God is truth. What he's done and what he has told us is that that should be your moral compass and that should be the thing that you go back to in the end of the day. Having the strength to make yes. those good choices. Because, yes. man, I always want to make good choices. <laughs> but I don't always make good choices. And it's really hard to make a good choice. Yes. But the more I practice making a good choice, the, the stronger I feel. Yeah. Um, about being able to make that choice again the next time. Yes, it's kind of like the willpower muscle, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and I, I love my uh, my fitness. I love working out, and I think about this, you know, the same concept that, you know, as I'm lifting weights or doing push-ups or whatever, as I do it more and more, I'm getting stronger. Yeah. And even though this has nothing to do with the physical body, you know, this is more of like an emotional thing, the, the willpower thing. But I think you're absolutely right that as you exercise it more it gets stronger and stronger. I wanted to delve a little bit deeper, so I asked my friend Odin, who is now out of school, to tell me what it was like when he was a teenager about the choices that he made. From my experience of, of, of making choices in my life, it's, it's, it's important to, to sort of seek other people's voices, I think, sometimes as well. Because um, like there's, there's been times in my life where I've had these big choices in my life that I've had to make, whether it was going to university or, or, or what to do with my life in general. And I've had to, um, and I think from those sorts of moments, I've, I've tried to, to find out what other people have wanted me to do, I think. And particularly when I was younger and in high school, that was really the thing that drove me when it came to decision making. No matter what kind of decision it was, whether it was going to church or, or what subjects to take at school or you know, or what to do on the weekends or, or like what movie we should see, you know, it was always, I was always focusing strongly on what other people in my life are saying, whether it was my friends at school or, you know, the older people around me. And, and sometimes those decisions or those choices ended up leading into bad places, uh, not, not great sort of places or spaces and things like that. Not necessarily terrible sort of situations, but situations that like I look back on my life and I realize, oh, maybe those choices that I made back then have affected how I am now. And a lot of these sorts of choices were really based around what I thought my friends would think of me. And, um, and I was really 
really focused on who I was because I so wanted to be popular. I so wanted to be liked by other people. And that was what was driving the choices I'd make. And I would make not great decisions, not great choices. And, and I just find myself feeling hurt and broken. Um, hurt and unwanted and things like that and I started to get you know and I got suspicious of what other people thought of me when people would talk to me it would always be like I just assumed that they were judging me or I'd assumed that they had some sort of ulterior motive and I had good friends sort of come around me and um, and share different parts about their lives with me and one of the things that I found was I developed a friend developed a, a few really good strong friendships uh, with some people who um, helped me find out I guess, how to make good choices. They help, they help me sort of come to terms with some of those sort of deeper moral sort of stuff. Like my, they really formed my conscience in a way. And so I think when it, when it comes to making choices now in my life, I find that I like to think about how it's going to affect my story. One of the principles of making good choice uh, is about this idea, a sense of picture, okay? So a vision of who you want to become as a person. So if you want to become a person who is, who is honest, if you want to be a person who believes that being truthful is important, then when you face a difficult decision where you might be tempted to lie, be dishonest, hide something from someone, if you already know, look, I want to be an honest person and this is something that's important to me, then you're going to have a lot better chance of actually living that out when it comes time to making that hard choice. But that, that sense of the picture of who you want to be into the future, I think is really important. Uh, when it comes to this idea of, of what's a good choice. So if a choice is leading me to become more that person that I want to be, well, that's probably a good choice. And if I've made a choice that goes against that picture of who I want to be in the future, then that's probably a bad choice. Look, that's a bit simplistic, but that's I think so that's a good. a good measuring stick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what other tips can you give us uh, today about making good choices? Sure, sure. So I've, I've come up with a little acronym, yep. okay? So I grew up in Canada uh, and for a while, it was a very short gig, I worked in the, in the oil fields. And when you worked in the oil fields, they always talked about every morning you had a little meeting, they talked about PPE, which stands for Personal Protective Equipment, okay? And, and at that time, that meant I had to have my hard hat on and my bright floral vest, right? So it, it draws up this image of safety you know, of being safe as a person. So I want to use this, this PPE acronym to kind right. of help us make some good choices, okay? So if you want to make good choices, be safe and live a life of few regrets, then, then follow this, okay? So the first one is, is picture, which I've already talked about, which is that, that picture of who you want to be. The second one is, is proactivity. So the second P stands for being proactive. And what I mean by that is, it's gonna be so much easier for you if you make the choice before you end up in a situation. So th that sounds a bit strange, but let's make it really concrete, okay? So we've already talked about uh, lying, okay? And about being honest. So let's talk about something different, maybe gossip. If you've already decided that you wanna be a person who speaks positively about others, you know, maybe gossip has, has injured you or hurt you in the past, and now you realize that you don't wanna do that to other people. If you want to be a person who speaks positively about others, if you make that choice before the moment when you're in that conversation with your friend and it's kind of going in that direction where they're starting to gossip and you can feel like they're kind of drawing you into that, if you haven't thought about it, if you haven't already made that decision, I, it's very likely that you're probably just going to go down that path and end up gossiping and then feel awful about it later. But yeah. if you've been proactive and you've thought about what kind of person do I want to be, and you've made a choice to speak positively about other people, then when you end up in that conversation, I think you have a much better chance of making good choice and going, actually, I don't really want to talk about this anymore. Could we change the topic? Or, you know, actually, I think that person's an okay person. I've seen them do these good things and kind of just steer it in a bit of a different direction. So cool. that's the, the second one. So being one. deliberate almost. Being deliberate, yeah, being yeah. proactive. I like yeah. that. And then the, the E stands for environment. So thinking about will this environment help me become that, that person that I want to become? So when I'm talking about environment, I'm talking about who's going to be there? You know, what are those people like? Is this an environment that's going to be conducive for me becoming that person? Or is it going to be an environment that's going to be not helpful? So I like to use the image of a party, you know? Right. You go to a party, we know what happens there. I went to lots of parties when I was a teenager. And I knew when I went there, 
some nights I knew that I was going to make bad choices because of my headspace going in. I already knew that I was going to say yes when I was offered too many beers or all the many temptations that were going to come my way. And other times I made the decision beforehand to go, actually, maybe I shouldn't even put myself in this environment because I know who's going to be there. Yeah. I know there's going to be lots of peer pressure. So sometimes if we know the environment is bad, we can just avoid it. Other times, if we've made that decision before we actually get into that moment where the person's handing us the beer, we, we have a much better chance of making good choice. So thinking about the environment that's going to be around me, what's the atmosphere like, you know, who's going to be there, what's it going to be like? I think those things, thinking about that, that E, that environment Definitely. question is, is a big help. Yeah, I even know as a parent of teenagers, if they come and ask me, you know, can I go to a party? Uh, often I'll ask those questions. So have you thought about who's going to be there, where it is, how you're going to get home, uh, what you're going to do there, yes. uh, what you're wearing, uh, what drinks are you taking? Yep. All of those things help you, I guess, steer yourself uh, towards that making Good choices. Absolutely. That that thinking ahead and being proactive thing and, and what is the environment going to be like, I think are really important. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much for coming today. I really want to encourage everyone to jump off this episode and write that vision of who you want to be. Uh, be deliberate and think about your environment to set you up for a win, to set you up to make all the choices that I know you want to make. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. It's been great to be here. No worries. You. This has been such a great time of learning about so many people's different perspectives on making good choices. It was so good to chat to the teenagers and realise that I'm actually not alone in trying to figure out how to make a good choice. It was great to hear from Odin and then to listen to Mark who gave us those tips. He talked about PPE, he talked about picture, to have a vision of who you want to be. Sometimes the difference between having a life that's thriving and not having a life that's thriving is actually the choices that we make because choices come with consequences. Consequences to us and consequences to other people. The second one he talked about was being proactive, being deliberate, making a plan, having a standard of what you will and won't do. He said that it's much better we're more likely to achieve success in that area if we actually make a plan. And the third thing he talked about was our environment. Think about where you're gonna go, who you're gonna be with, what's gonna happen there, all of those areas, and hopefully that will set us up for a win to make good choices. This has been an awesome episode. I've learned a lot. Hopefully I can you know, have some self-control and make those choices in my own life. So we've come to the end of this episode. I can't wait to see you next time. talk in our church today about the new evangelization and we might ask well what's new about the new evangelization one thing that's new is that we're trying to renew the faith in people who should already be catholic should already be christian individuals families communities whole cultures that need to rediscover the gospel and so what's new is that they're getting a new shot in the arm of faith of evangelization another thing that's new about it is the way that we do that and the new media and groups like Shalom World TV are very important for bringing the gospel anew to our cultures, to our families, to each of us individually. And so I encourage all the viewers of Shalom World TV and I encourage uh, Shalom World TV themselves to keep up the good work, uh, to keep watching this channel and to keep up the good work of presenting the Catholic faith to our world today.